You ready? You coming, Bailey? Bailey's not coming, guys. Good morning and welcome. Hello, everyone. Oh, Bailey is coming. Hey, Bailey. Come on out here, Bailey. Hey, guys. How are you? Well, let me tell you something. It was quite a night last night. You will see some of this crazy storm we had going on. Sorry, guys. We had going on last night. There was tornadoes. I know there was tornadoes in Alabama and Tennessee. And a couple days ago, there were tornadoes in Oklahoma. And the storms that are rolling through the Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Mississippi area are pretty severe. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about severe weather, tornadoes, uh, what that means to us here on the homestead, and most importantly, guys, what that means when you're living in your RV. Because last night when those storms came through, we had several apps open watching the storms, and we were under a tornado warning, even more than a watch, a warning for about six hours last night. And I ended up staying up and staying awake till the first round of storms moved through because like I said guys we are in we're in our camper okay there's no protection from a tornado in that camper at all you're basically in a tin can and if a tornado came anywhere close to us it would just pick that thing up like like a tin can and toss it all over the place not to mention all these beautiful tall loblolly pines could get blown down on the camper and unlike a house um, that camper is not going to support that kind of weight coming down from that kind of a height so there is a lot of preparation going on this season for a lot of homesteaders and um, people in general and we're gonna go over some of the things that we do here on the homestead to prepare for severe storms. So let me spin you guys around so you can see. Hold on guys, I gotta do a little camera work here. You can see our greenhouses. So I know that we get some pretty good winds around here. So what I have done when we moved the greenhouses is I have milled up two by six timbers and those are all along both sides of the outside of the greenhouse and then the greenhouse is attached from the inside to those timbers and then on the outside of those timbers i've driven rebar down into the ground and i've fastened um, that rebar to those timbers to kind of lock that that uh, greenhouse down to the ground but you have to be prepared like we had to go out last night before um, a couple hours before the storms came in and we had to close up all the windows close both sides because if you allow the the wind to get in there it will just either shred that or try and pick it up and and move it or bend it or damage it in some kind so a structure like a greenhouse uh, in a heavy windstorm you really want to seal it up so that the wind can't get in there and act like a parachute um, we did the same thing with our gazebo 
last night. Um, closed that up, but I opened it back up first thing this morning. And another thing we closed up was our shelter logics. Those needed to get closed up and sealed up for the same reason. If you can keep the wind from getting in there and making it act like a parachute, um, you have a much better chance to keep your stuff in a heavy windstorm. Now, if a tornado came down here or crossed our homestead, there's no protection from that. You're, you're Unless you're in a storm shelter, um, all of this would have been gone, completely gone. So you do the best you can and you hope for the best. Luckily for us, um, in this set of cells, um, there was no tornado that formed in our area. Um, so as far as our shelters go and uh, our living, uh, everything was perfectly fine. But that brings us to another subject, and that subject is livestock. So if you look, guys, you should be able to See my chickens right over there. And Rocco's coming in. We gotta protect Rocco too. I don't know what he's looking for. Um, you've gotta protect your animals in a big storm like this. So that chicken coop that's um, right there, um, it's relatively heavy. It's on wheels and you can move it, but it is a relatively heavy um, structure and i'm telling you guys my chickens i think they got a death wish because it was about 8 15 it was a good hour before the storms were uh scheduled to come in 8 15 8 30 and uh it was already dark and i looked at them and half my chickens were still outside so i don't know whether my door shut early or the chickens are having some kind of attitude problem. They were out the night before as well. But I had to come out here and the door was closed. Open the door up and um, chew them all into their coop uh, before the storm actually rolled in because they're much safer inside there and it's enclosed primarily for the most part on three sides so they can stay dry they can stay out of the wind and of course they're protected from predators so that is a big big part of what happened with the chickens there and our other chickens our meat birds well they're up on the other side of the property and you guys have seen their chicken coop it's a mobile coop and uh, that did just fine last night too there's not much you can do for that thing other than hope for the best really but come on over here guys oh we're in the shade oh i like that take a look we have i don't know why my stand is is not set up correctly hold on guys let me fix you there you go you can see I got the baby bunnies and then back over there I got buck those are our meat rabbits they got moved over here underneath this shade area and actually I don't know can you see it my brooder box is over here as well so that gives them a little bit more protection from the wind obviously on the day-to-day -day, they're in the shade it's a better spot for them um mama bunny you notice mama bunny's not here she's still behind our camper so she's pregnant she's actually due today so her nest box is in there she's all set up to give birth um and we decided that it was a good idea to just leave her where she was until she had the babies 
and nurse them for probably three weeks, maybe four, till they're just about ready to get moved out of her coop. At that point, we'll move her over here so she's in the shade and her babies are in the shade. And that'll be it for her for this spring season. We don't breed our rabbits through um, the summer. It's, it's just too hot and I think it puts too much stress on them. So we will pick that up again in the fall. But this was a perfect setup for them because they had some windbreak with the tree line that's behind them and were well protected and they did perfectly fine so everything worked out good but it's not really just us guys it's not just us and it's not just um our animals that you have to look out for you can see i'm over here in the garden area this garden area actually had to get prepped for heavy winds and possible tornado. So I came in, I put some more staples in my ground fabric where I thought the wind might get up underneath it and get it. Um, because it's planted out now, guys. It's all planted. So spilling the beans. You still watch the video tomorrow. Um... Yeah, it's all planted. So if that got ripped up, it could have tore those plants. It could have um, damaged those plants in, in a significant way. So that had to get prepped out and uh, taken care of. All the garden hoses need to get picked up. Any debris you have that could get caught in the wind that you can pick up and get stored away, you kind of want to do that because we don't want to be you know exiting the camper at 11 o'clock at night because the tornado sirens are coming off and have t-posts and other things flying around in the wind that would that would be very very bad for sure so let's come back over here and talk specifically about the camper guys so any of you who have lived in an RV, camped in an RV, own an RV, or even if you don't, RVs are an amazing vehicle. They're great for leisure. They're great for, in our case, living until we can get our house build done. But they're made to be extremely light. They're really only made for summer use. So they're not well insulated um, and they're not made to last. Now this is a 1998 Coachman Catalina and it's doing very well for us. Everything inside works. It's in fairly good shape. I did replace the whole nose of it. I've made repairs to the roof. I've made repairs pretty much to all sections of it because it's an older camper. And uh, as they roll down the road, they vibrate and everything kind of just loosens up. But it is not where you want to be in a tornado by any means. And me and Missy were talking before the storm rolled in. What would we do, you know, if a tornado drops and starts heading straight for us? And if there's time, you know, we could go get in the truck and head in the opposite direction but you know if it came in at three o'clock in the morning and we heard alarms going off and our phone started beeping and there wasn't much time left that's not where you want to be you don't want to be in there that's uh, all metal you don't want that coming apart and you're sitting inside it so you know we discussed possibly crawling underneath our house foundation and grabbing a hold of one of the pyres down underneath it. Now, that's well built. And if you got under one of the supporting beams relatively in the middle of it, you probably would be pretty protected from these pine trees. 
but you could get buried under there and not be able to get out until help arrived. And uh, really, the safest place, if we were in a, you got 30 seconds to get to shelter here on our homestead, our safest place actually is laying flat on the ground, preferably in a, um, a ditch or a walkway that's kind of low in the garden because no trees can get to us from there. Um, the power line could drop. That's a possibility. But you could get a little bit away from that um, and get down as low as you possibly can to the ground. The, the closer you get to the ground, the less that wind is going to um, have a, the effect of picking you up and taking you away. Now, is that something I'm recommending? No, I'm not recommending that. Don't run out into an open field in a tornado. Seek appropriate shelter. But for us here on the homestead, if we can't get under our house foundation, then that would be the next closest alternative that would keep us the safest because the trees can't fall and hit us. Um, we wouldn't get buried out there. Um, it doesn't matter where you go, flying debris will always be a problem. Um, it's just another scenario. This is something that we could do if we had to. But most likely, guys, the safest place for us in that situation is down in underneath there because the main beams that are sitting on the foundation that are holding up um, the floor joists, those are six inches across and eight inches um, in uh, height. And then on top of those, there's uh, a four inch by eight inch um, floor joist sitting there so it there's quite a bit of stability underneath there um to protect you if that happened but whoo it was crazy crazy last night i have some footage it'll be in an upcoming video guys of the storm and what it looked like last night from outside the door of the camper and let me tell you, I was, I was a little bit worried. Um, usually, you know, powerful storms, it is what it is. They don't really bother me. But with tornadoes breaking out to the west of us and tornadoes breaking out to the north of us and tornadoes breaking out to the east of us and southeast of us, um, the possibilities of a tornado or at least very, very serious winds was, was pretty high. So uh, it's always something you gotta look out for when you're homesteading or farming or ranching that uh, storms come in guys and you gotta button everything up, close it up and do the best you can and hope for the best. I just wanna say now that keep all of the folks that were in last night's tornadoes um, in your thoughts and in your prayers um, they are going through a pretty difficult time right now I would imagine and pretty devastating you know when you're when your house is blown away so go check them out if they have channels support them watch their videos thanks for coming guys I really appreciate it I hope you enjoy this new series we got going on and look forward to Saturday's video. We'll see you later. Bye.